good morning so let us go through some case studies now uh, where we will see some uh, the burning characteristics of uh, liquid fuel uh, flames and also uh, a fire will then we will also see about the transient flame spread over a uh, pool of liquid so the first case study is actually done using <coughs> fire dynamic simulator it's a software specially developed for simulating fires so in this case study we will see about the burning of a methanol pool <coughs> the methanol pool actually is having a, a square shaped cross section of 270 mm uh, side length so it is a turbulent flame basically and uh, this is a video which is showing the flame which is coming out and uh, how the flame fluctuates etc and uh, <coughs> the the temperature how it varies is shown by the color bar here in the right hand side so you can see that the green color basically uh, says that the temperature is in the range of about 1400 1600 uh, degrees centigrade okay so and uh, you can also see this that is a heat release rate from the what is the total heat release rate as the methanol pool burns that as a function of time also is shown here so this video you can show see that the the flame actually forms over the entire pool and uh, it actually fluctuates you can see that it fluctuates so its height actually varies so if you take uh, the height as a function of time it actually shows some oscillations clear oscillations and uh, similarly the heat release rate also you can see that it also shows a yeah, good amount of oscillation as you go through with the time okay so this is the nature of a pool flame basically how it burns and uh, temperature uh, sometimes it becomes higher locally you can see some red packets so uh, on the orange packets etc so locally it becomes higher but average temperature as i told is it in the is it in the range of this so this is a simulation where a steady burning of uh, metal pool is uh, shown when i say steady burning basically it just burns but uh, that is a uh, oscillation in the flame the gas phase uh, reactions the entrainment of the air causes these oscillations and the uh, heat release rate also even though there is a slight increase in the heat release rate you see a good amount of oscillation in the heat release rate so the second uh, simulation again is done in fts this is in a circular pool of uh, 300 mm diameter circular pool again you can see that the temperature contours are shown here which represents the flame and the color bar is shown in the right hand side in degree centigrade so you can see that orange bright colors etc comes into play so you can see we are in this range of uh, average temperature when you play this video you can see how the flame fluctuates as well as the heat release rate varies with time so you can see that there is a intact area where always the flame is seen and uh, <clears throat> after that there is a region where the flame fluctuates sometimes the flame is seen here sometimes the flame will not be seen in this region okay so <clears throat> there is a particular length at which the reaction is always happening after that the reaction happens in intermittent manner then after this certain length you can see there is no reaction at all so these are the three zones so this is the flame zone and this is called intermittent zone where there is oscillation again sometimes flame will be there sometimes flame will not be there and here often the flame will not be there at all so we can say there is no reaction in this zone so this is the plume zone you can say when the hot gases are formed so normally a flame like this has three zones basically and the heat release rate also shows the variation a sharp increase in the heat release happens then it almost stabilizes after some 
particular uh, time instant. Okay, so these are the things. So just re replay the video so that you will understand that the flame is always there in this zone. Then after that, there is there is an intermediate zone. That flame is not there. Then the hot gases go up in the plume zone. So and uh, these fluctuations again are caused by the air entrainment, the air from the ambient entrains. and uh, this uh, the heat from the flame is fed back and vapors generate and they go to the flame so since the diameter is 300 mm 30 cm it is in the transitional regime of burning or uh, there is some turbine induced also so this is the second case study the third case study <coughs> again done in fds so this basically shows when you have a pool again here we are uh, representing a pool of uh, 60 mm by 60 mm square pool and uh, now you see that <coughs> this pool is bounded by two one, two walls on two sides so this means that the air which is coming from the left left hand side a free stream air is coming from the left hand side actually goes through this in this manner so that means this goes in a circumferential manner towards the pool like this so in the previous cases when there is no bounding wall etc you will see that the air entrains from all the directions okay now in this case also if the bounding walls are not present then this velocity from the left would push the flame over the pool and it will be like a bounding light above uh, flame but due to the presence of these two walls the you can see that there is a movement of air in this direction like the flow goes over the for the air flow goes over the wall and uh, circumferentially enters or surrounds the pool so that means here there is a circumferential uh, entrainment happening around the pool when it is ignited so what happens is based upon the air velocity this is actually experimental work also is reported in the literature and uh, the fds fire dynamic simulator simulations are compared with the experiments basically the flame height is going to vary based upon the transitional component of the air velocity which is induced due to this uh, so that depends upon the free stream velocity u so as u varies sometimes you will see a flame which is shorter and uh, the flame height reaches a maximum then it actually drops okay and uh, there is tremendous oscillations in the flame height etc so we will see the simulation results so this is called fire world when a pool flame okay a pool is created and uh, there, there is a circumferential component of air entrainment then a yeah, fire whirl is established and uh, in this case the fuel is in obtain and uh, we will see that this fire whirl has a long flame height a larger flame height than a normal pool flame so this is the video where again we have shown the temperature slice where temperature in degree centigrade the color bar shows the temperature variation we will show the uh, this and the heat release rate as a function of time also is shown here this is for a particular uh, velocity case okay so even though the velocities in the previous slide velocities are varied we have shown it for a case where there is a whirl formation so in a particular range of this velocity from say point uh, 3 to point 5 the fire whirl forms in other velocity the fire whirl is not formed basically so this is a case where there is a fire whirl is formed and the velocity is about say point it is in the range of 0.3 to 0.5 so now if you play this video you will see that the flame forms and you can see the circumferential component there is a swirling component of this velocity so the flame height actually is very long in the previous cases you would have seen that the flame was shorter and there, there was a axial oscill oscillations are present but here you can see that the flame is very long the burning rate also is higher etc this is because of the circumferential component of the velocity which is induced due to these bounding walls so we have talked about the fire world in the beginning 
so the firewall is one of the important um, occurrence which naturally occurs when there is a instability which causes a tangential air entrainment and uh, that will increase the burning rate of the liquid as well as the flame height so this is the see again you can see the average temperature varies in this range basically so this is about the firewall then the final yeah the final case study is the transient flame spread over a methanol pool here we are considering a methanol pool in a tray which is 1 meter long and 0.3 meter deep there is a methanol pool and this is kept in a wind tunnel well where there is a air flow velocity from left to right and um, the free stream enters from 0.25 meters from the leading edge of the pool and this is trailing edge of the pool and that is another 0.25 meters uh, platform towards the trailing edge also and uh, this height is about 1.5 meter this is wind tunnel and this is top wall so you can see that this is the experimental setup used by japanese researchers and uh, here the simulation is done using in house code photon code here two is a two phase code basically where the gas phase as well as liquid phase are solved okay so transient flame spread the ignition is actually done at this point where the red dot is shown the ignition is done here a flame forms and the flame actually spreads from left to right and uh, the air also flows from left to right so this is a concurrent flame spread okay so this is the exit boundary this is inlet boundary for air and uh, here in this this is the interface where heat mass balances or implied okay so that means there is a heat transfer from the gas phase to the interface and interface to the liquid phase and mass transfer from the liquid phase to the gas phase so this is our model okay then after ignition starts how the flame spreads whether it is uniform etc we will see the results so these are the gas phase temperature and velocity the uh, fields so the vectors are shown here and uh, when the flame forms after a small time interval the flame actually spreads over the a small portion of the pool the this is gray scale contour okay dark color is about say 2500 400 to 2800 degrees uh, centigrade and uh, white color is ambient temperature or 300 to 450 uh, kelvin this is all in kelvin okay so now you can see that the flame forms and uh, the flame try to propagate the flame grows in size and after a particular point say 0.15 uh, seconds the flame actually dips here and uh, stands very close to the pool then this actually ignites another flame here so one flame spreads from the leading edge where the initial ignition was done the flame itself goes down and ignites another part here and another flame forms here you can see so this flame is extending and this flame now propagates you can see that the this flame propagates and thus goes and covers this so this flame extends because there is some mass which is burning from the interface so that this flame is uh, capturing that and this secondary flame flows over this so the flame spread basically because of long pole you can see that initially a flame forms and it spreads over this secondary ignition is caused a secondary flame forms and that also moves so this is one of the important factor you have to understand then after <coughs> sufficient time because it's concurrent the flame spreads over the entire phase and there is a single flame only occupying the entire surface and uh, this this is the flame standoff the distance between the flame 
surface to the liquid surface is the flame standoff. So that flame standoff distance varies from the leading edge to the tailing edge. It increases. Now, if you see velocity, velocity <coughs> basically you can uh, see when there is a solid surface or any condensed phase surface, the velocity profile you will see that, that the velocity is zero at the surface because of the no slip condition and the velocity actually increases like this and reaches the boundary layer uh, at the boundary layer reaches the free stream value. But here you can see that the velocities are different, the velocity profiles are different because of the fact that there is a surface flow which is induced. We will show in the next slide that. And also in the in the flame zone, so for example, this is the free stream velocity u infinity. Okay. Now, if in the same scale, if you draw the velocity, the velocity actually increases and goes like this and goes. That means in the flame zone, this is the u infinity here, u infinity. In the flame zone, u is greater than u infinity. That is a velocity locally increases. This is called velocity overshoot. The flame actually pushes the, there is a pressure difference that will act, that causes the velocity to increase more than this, more than the value of the free stream velocity. You can see this velocity increases and goes. So that overshoot occurs in the gas phase. So the flame spread shows that multiple ignition as the flame spread is possible because here please see that methanol is the liquid and it has a low flash point of around 11 degrees centigrade. So, ambient temperature is around 25 degrees centigrade. So, always vapors are present. It is easy for it to just flame to propagate as a gas phase flame propagation. Now, interesting thing is in the liquid phase. So, this is only liquid phase is shown here. Temperature is shown by the dark uh, grayscale contour and uh, the velocity is induced. So, wherever the flame is there, at the end of the flame, you can see there is a velocity which is induced. This velocity has a scale of about 0.3 meters per second. It is not a small velocity. So, this is the scale for 0.3. So, it may be 0.2 meter per second. So, wherever the flame has spread over, this is a high temperature and this is a low temperature. There is a temperature gradient. So, due to Marangani convection, the velocity is induced here and the velocity decays as, the, uh, as you go downstream. Okay. So, similarly here also as the flame has spread to this part, next to that immediately you see a very high velocity induced at the surface. So, the liquid phase that is a surface velocity is induced, but since the depth is very high a 0.3 meters, the velocity uh, due to the viscosity of the liquid, the velocity is not penetrating and recirculation zone is not clearly formed. Okay. So, this is about this as the temperature slowly increases at the interface and wherever the flame has spread, the velocity is having a shoot that is the surface moves from the point. Yesterday we have shown the video where in the door decay that was the surface movement of the pool. Similarly here also we can see that the velocity vectors indicate the surface movement. So these are all important things when you solve for flame spread we need to consider both gas phase and liquid phase transport processes. Now when you consider take any velocity, any velocity free stream velocity, the flame as it spread over the liquid pool from say 0 to 1 meter, 100 centimeters 1 meter here, the flame spread velocity Vf is not uniform as we have shown initially we take any velocity, so let us take say 3.9 meter per second, initially it is high, then as it spreads over at a particular point reaches a minimum value like this say around in this case of 3.9 meter per second, it reaches a minimum value, the VF reaches a minimum value around 40 centimeters. Then it slowly increases, reaches another local maximum around 80, then it decays. This N decay is due to the pool is going to be finished, there is no more vapors coming out. So, this there is a slow, slow down uh, spread there. Okay. So, this initially when the flame spreads as a single flame, the flame standoff increases due to which the heat up decreases. So, the flame velocity uh, minimum reaches a minimum. 
then a secondary flame is formed and that accelerates so that is what this increase indicates then towards the end of the flame again it decreases so these are the non uniform variation of the flame set velocity over the length of the pool now the validation so as i told you japanese researcher suzuki and hirano have done the experiments for several velocities okay and uh, they have got the average flame set velocity and uh, you can see that first of all the average flame set velocity increases as the freezing velocity is increased in a concurrent flow aided by the air velocity the velocity of the flame also increases and uh, the numerical simulation is in red and the dotted line with symbol shows the experiment and uh, they are within the range so this is the end of the case studies we are going to continue with the lecture on theoretical analysis of steady mass burning rate so in this as i told you we are considering a this is the theoretical analysis in which i consider a long pool or a semi infinite pool and uh, there is a flow of air a slow flow of air as we saw in the concurrent frame rate case and there is a due to this there is a boundary layer formation and uh, when it is ignited there is a flame which is formed like this now this is the x direction as we discussed yesterday and this is the y direction for us because as i indicated here so at any y there is a x equal to del which denotes the boundary layer edge and uh, x equal to xf shows the flame stand off from the surface so this is the surface methanol surface or any fuel surface so now we are going to find solution theoretical solution for the mass fraction of the fuel temperature okay etc in two zones one zone between the fuel surface and the flame this is flame this is boundary layer okay now inner zone this is called inner zone here and this is called outer zone so two solutions are possible two solutions are required one in between the fuel surface and the flame surface second one will be within the flame surface and the boundary layer outer zone so air comes from this boundary layer to the flame similarly fuel comes from the surface to the flame and uh, both air and the or oxygen and the fuel is consumed in the flame zone that means at the flame zone i can say mass fraction of fuel equal to mass fraction of o2 equal to 0 okay and uh, this flame is a zero thick flame because of the fact that the chemistry is very very fast infinitely fast okay so now we need and this is steady burning please understand steady mass burning rate so steady burning occurs that means there is no degradation of the fuel layer the fuel is extremely thick or we are supplying fuel at the same rate at which it burns so it is a steady burning case the flame intact is intact at this particular uh, locations similarly boundary layer is also intact so in this case i need not solve for liquid phase this is liquid phase i need not solve for this only the gas phase has to be solved and uh, between the gas phase and liquid phase some coupling conditions i will anyway give okay that is the heat transfer from the solid uh, the gas phase to the liquid phase the heat transfer from the gas phase to the liquid phase causes evaporation of the liquid phase towards the gas phase so that is the thing so it's a one dimensional problem we are concentrating on x at given any y what is the solution for the inner zone between the surface and the flame and outer zone between the flame and the ambient okay so as i told yesterday we are considering only laminar case 
that is the length as well as the velocity see Reynolds number is rho u l by mu here for a given liquid or a, uh, a given uh, fuel rho and mu are the same so i vary v uh, u with the velocity r l such that Reynolds number is less than the critical Reynolds number equal to 5 into 10 power 5. Okay, so I am in the laminar regime. Okay, then the reaction, the flame zone will be within the boundary layer because of the fact that oxygen comes from the ambient towards the flame. Similarly, fuel comes from the surface and they can get consumed here. So, basically, if the fuel passes through the flame, then you can see there will be fuel here. But assumption of infinitely fast chemistry makes that the flame is having a very high burning rate or we can say that the kinetics is infinitely fast so that the mass reaction of fuel and oxidizer are zero at the flame. So, the flame forms at a particular distance from the fuel surface. If the burning rate is higher, this flame may be pushed slightly up. Similarly, the boundary layer also can vary. But that means, if the velocity is reduced so much, then the air coming in towards the flame will be at a lower rate. But if the evaporation is at a faster rate, then the flame can move up. Okay. But in all these cases, the flame zone will be in between the fuel surface and the boundary layer edge or the boundary layer uh, uh, whatever you, you uh, the thickness within the boundary layer thickness ok. So, now one more the assumptions are listed here the main assumption is laminar then infinitely fast chemical reaction then radiative heat transfer is neglected finally it is steady burning that means the surface will not regress and uh, everything will be steady. That means there are two things the thick fuel layer can be assumed which is burning slowly or the fuel is fed at the same rate at which it is burning. 